I supposed to follow you? So I know there's no audio, but you can imagine that this thing sounds amazing. Um, the power and the torque this thing puts down is awesome. Keep in mind that's when the belt's not broken. I just had to rebuild the whole clutch system on this bike. New helix, uh, new bushings, put a clutch on it, and it's only got 100 miles on it. So that's kind of sad, but it is a lot of fun when it works, and that's that's a common theme with Can-Am. Um, the fenders are stupid. I'm getting covered in mud right here. I don't even know why it has fenders. I guess they put the bare minimum to look you know appropriate. Tears through this swamp stuff. One thing to note is there's no ruts out here, right? So the fact that it's low on ground clearance doesn't really hurt it that much until you try to climb up on some weeds like this. If you don't have speed, it doesn't have the uh, ground clearance to creep up on it. It just bottoms out and you're stuck. I had to, it took me about 10 minutes to get out of this spot, rocking it back and forth, pushing it out. I'm not going to bore you with all that, but you can see what it's doing here. It's getting high centered under the center. It's framing out. Um, so I just kept turning and then pushing it backwards and finally there's no there's no ledge here. So it's not really good at climbing out of holes basically because of the clearance under the center. Very bad breakover angle. But the power is just awesome. This right here totally clarifies as a, uh, I don't know, improper display of horsepower. It's just very impressive. Almost gets stuck right here because it's three wheel drive. But once the locker kicks in, boom, it's moving and it is slinging some mud. I actually had to be careful not to knock the drone out of the air with the amount of mud this thing was slinging. Super impressed with the power on this bike and the torque, but uh, like I said, that belt, I don't know. It's fine for this stuff, but in real thick mud, the belt's going to be hurting. This is where I actually got stuck bad enough where I couldn't get it out. We had to use a Honda. This is a relative to the toy boda. All can ams are good for is a shooting platform. This is some good stuff right here. You just can't do this with a Can-Am, mostly because uh, I can afford to get water in this motor and it's not going to lock itself up. Um, yeah, V-Twins don't like getting water in them. Anyways, but uh, 300 did awesome. The new 400EX carburetor, because it's a brand new carburetor, is sealed a lot better than my old 20-year-old 300EX carburetor. So it runs great. I bumped it in neutral right here on purpose to see how it would idle underwater, and that resulted in me hey, flipping off of it because the back floats real bad with the 29.5 LL1 wides on 12-inch wheels. Here's a good technique for how to get back on the bike after you do that. Um, let the front sink, hit the throttle, counter, counter lean, good to go. Um, 
if you want hear when you want to hear more of my totally biased and irrelevant opinions about the Can-Am, I've got another video right after this one that's just a bunch of me yapping about the Can-Am. But uh, I did like it a lot more than the Outlander 1000. Um, and then the lower gears they're putting on the last few years since 2015 are really nice. The sad thing is, though, they still break front diffs and they're still three-wheel drive. So to really make this bike super reliable, you got to do a Mavic swap, which is crazy expensive. And uh, you would need the Aussie front locker to get a real four-wheel drive unit. And it's so heavy, once you do all that, I don't know if it's really worth it. When it punches through right here, you can see, uh, yeah, it's just too heavy. And check out that three-wheel drive in action. Oh, yes. Pretty fun, though, when it works.